Hello, Facebook Live. It's Terry Jo talking to you today about Dia de los Muertos. I am super happy to share with you today about a very special holiday. Um, it's actually one of my two favorite holidays. My my favorite holiday. Oh, they're both equal. No, I like this one better. Um, is I love Valentine's Day just because I love everything with hearts and I love everything related to love. And then I love um, Dia de los Muertos because it is a very sacred, special way to honor people who have passed. And I want to share with you my altar to get started. Um, it's in. It's behind me. And sorry for the delay of my, um, I'll share it again, but for the, I'm so happy with it. I'm sorry for the delay of having this talk. I wanted to have it a few days ago, then I wanted to have it yesterday, then I wanted to have it today. But actually the altar has taken much longer than I thought because I really put a lot of um, heart into it. And first I want to share what Dia de los Muertos is or how I how I learned about it. I think I had probably heard about it before I lived in Mexico, but I never really paid much attention to it. And then when I moved to Mexico in 2005, I had a really dear friend of mine um, from Seattle, Angela, who called me and said, um, hey, I'm, I'd love to come out to Mexico. I don't know if it was her or I that suggested around the Day of the Dead. Maybe it was her. And um, and we looked for the most traditional place to go experience what this was. And uh, I had no idea how, what a powerful experience it was going to be for me. So we hopped on a bus at midnight on Halloween night because Day of the Dead is actually uh, celebrated over two nights. November 1st, um, the eve of November 1st is when the tradition believes that the young, any young spirits that have passed away, any children or babies, they come and visit the first night. And then the second night, any of the adults um, come to visit. And so anyway, my friend Angela and I went out. I remember very clearly because we went out that night dressed. I was a leopard. She was a black cat. I have tons of pictures of this that you've probably seen. And we had so much fun. And then we hopped in a taxi and took to the bus station and took a bus to Michoacan at midnight and arriving, I think, in the morning, you know, next morning on the 1st. And um, we stayed at a little hotel, a cute hotel in the plaza area of um, Pátzcuaro, which is one of the real traditional places to celebrate Um and honor the Day of the Dead um, tradition. So we didn't know what we were doing. We had no plans and we're not the type to have formal plans or join a tour or anything, but we were walking down the street that day and some guy was selling tickets for a, a bus that left that night at nine o'clock and something like that. And, and it basically went to the cemetery, to four different cemeteries through the night. And we returned in the morning at like 6 a.m. And so we just looked at each other and we're like, let's do it. Cause we didn't you know, know. And so we ended up getting on this bus and um, I, the, the highlights I'll share with you is the first cemetery we went to was supposedly the only place in Mexico, it was a very small place where there's a church on the actual cemetery grounds. Apparently that's not at all how it's built, which I'd never really thought of, but it was a really sacred place. And I, it was a big tour bus we were on probably you know, 40 people, 60 people maybe. And I just remember getting off the bus and all you saw was the glow of can candles. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to post a couple pictures of this. Um, I was just completely enamored because it was just this tiny cemetery with marigolds. This is the, let me find it, um, the official flower of Day of the Dead. I had to look everywhere to find these, by the way. Apparently, they're not a popular flower in California. Um, at least, maybe they're sold out. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, what I wanted to share was that um, this cemetery in particular had the most impact on me because it was so tiny and it was packed with people sitting around the grave sites, singing. And there were candles and flowers and food and tequila and cigarettes and everything that the, so the tradition is you put out everything that the beloved likes, 
you build an altar for them and their spirits will come and visit. And so these people stay all night um, waiting for the spirits and just communing with each other. And I know that's what touched me most was all these people coming together in celebration of love. And I'll share why with why it's insignificant when you look at my altar in a minute, but um, it really was deeply healing for me. I, I couldn't even talk uh, because I don't feel in our culture in the United States, we honor or celebrate or appreciate death uh, or remember people. You know, it's, um, we don't, it's just that we don't have a tradition around it. And um, hopefully that's changing and um, we can celebrate the birthdays of loved ones who pass or the ones who die, um, even the anniversary of their death or a day of the dead, which I love because you can bring it all together in one holiday and call the spirits and honor the people that have passed. So it was very moving for me. Um, and so part of the, the emotion was really that I had never grieved or honored the death of my mother that died when I was a baby. And one of the things that people would say to me all the time when I would say that my mother had passed when I was young is this um, statement, oh, well, you were so young, you don't remember, and so hurts. I want to share if you're watching this, don't say that to people. Please don't say that to people. Like, you were too young, you really don't remember. Um, because that's not true. We remember on a cellular level, we we feel everything. We remember everything. We We signed up for this journey. And all of it's part of it. So anyway, that was significant for me because I felt like in all growing up, we weren't allowed to talk about her. We weren't allowed to have pictures of her. There's a whole story around that that I won't go into, but it was really like put the past behind us and move on. And because of that, it really stunted my growth in certain ways and created some other issues for me of really being almost overly self-reliant and self-sufficient and not trusting anyone. Um, because I just didn't have an outlet for that grief and that pain. And so what I found is in this Day of the Dead celebration, there's this honoring of life and a life that, you know, has passed over into another realm. And I totally believe we go into other realms. I don't believe death is the end at all. In fact, I, I think people are, I often will joke around saying, I think people are lucky that they get out of earth school. It's like they graduate. So they get to go on to the next, you know, I'm sure it's a higher realm than this, you know, not that this is so bad. I'm not trying to put down earth. Anyway, so that was profound. And then we went on to um, three other cemeteries. And I only actually remember one of them, which was huge. Like it spanned several, I think several blocks. It was so big. And we walked all around. And there are statues made of these marigolds everywhere, like bicycles. And I can't think of what else they are, like just statues of prayer, praying hands, and like all these things. People put all this devotion into the altars of their loved ones. So for those of you just joining, I'm going to show you again my altar because I just love it. And I'll tell you about the people on there in a minute. There's, when I was preparing for it, it was interesting because I was just going to do my mom and my maternal grandmothers, which I really feel like I have um, four. Um, and then and then also my Mexican mama, Alicia. But then a few others came through. Actually, a lot of people came through and I started cutting up all these pictures, you know, printing and cutting up all these pictures. I had like 20 people I was gonna put on the altar. And then I just really stopped and I tuned in and I thought, you know, what I really want my altar to be about is the maternal lineage um, of my ancestry and also married into family members that are were maternal for me. Um, and also Alicia in Mexico and Yalapa, who's um, like a mother to me. And then I wanted to honor, which I'll show you right here, these four, actually four souls that passed this year in 20, um, 2019. I'll start with those. So the cat there is my dear friend, Teresa's <laughs> I'm gonna cry. cat, um, mama who I lived with in Seattle, Teresa and Therese and um, Mama and her other two cats. And now she has another, a third, but um, Mama passed away this year and that was a very emotional experience because she was really comforting for me when I was, lived at the house and also like 
one of Teresa's best friends, of course. Very special cat. And then this one here is my dear friend, Steve Fieldman. I love you, Steve. He um, was like a spiritual brother to me, still is, because I believe we just keep going, right? We don't, we don't, uh, we just change the form, that's it. But Steve was um, on my project team at USM for CHH with my dear friend Jackie and another friend Michael. And he passed away. Um, I'm actually going to his funeral, uh, his celebration of life next weekend. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so that's Steve. This is my Uncle John who uh, I grew up with, married to my Aunt Shirley, the father of Jill and John, my cousins, and he passed away very recently. Um, a beautiful man, a teacher, and um, just really made a, a difference in people's lives. And then here's our beloved, for those of you that went to USM, Usman, who passed away um, actually last December. So it was 2018 when he passed, but I wanted to, I really felt called to put him there on the altar because um, his anniversary is coming up of his passing. And he was such a special soul, always being of service, always um, talking about spirit and so joyful. I have no doubt that all three of these men and mama are flying high somewhere, enjoying their freedom as souls, not in human form anymore. So that's, that's my this year people. And then I'll show you, I'll, since I'm here, I'll show you the other people on the altar. I feel like my little child self, by the way, for those of you that don't know. Um, so you know my practice that I do is this inner trio connection, which is connecting with my personality. That's the adult me. My child self, which is really our past. And then um, my higher self, which is the future and all-encompassing self or the soul, right? So... Uh, that's my practice every day we talk and I'm very connected with these three parts of me. And, and um, so my child self is the one that wanted to get the altar just right because she so loves ritual. And I think all of our child selves love ritual and magic and sacredness and creating sacred space and making things beautiful um, or practical, whatever your style is. You may not be like as fluffy as I am, but she's the one that loves this altar. Oh, sorry, I keep going back and forth. I'm just so excited about it. But I want to tell you something else. Kind of funny. So um, the night that I decided I was going to do this altar, I've never... I've done an altar with teens because I work with teens. So we de we've done it a couple times, uh, Day of the Dead celebration with teens. I did it in my first grade class when I worked in Forestville. And we did it all the time at the American School of Puerto Vallarta where I taught kindergarten. They did a big altar at the school. And I did a little one in Pascuaro that night when I went with my friend Angela for the first time to these ceremonies. And oh, we also went to this island of, I think it's called Henizia so amazing um where they had the whole celebration there too i mean just it was, it was a profound life-changing trip if you ever want to go anywhere to change your life go for the day of the dead to Botswana and and go on a midnight bus tour uh, thanks janet isn't it amazing i'm so happy my child self totally decorated that um but what i was going to tell you is i did make the little altar in my hotel room for my mom and I remember the whole thing with the altar is you make it attractive for the spirits to come visit you and, um, and you know, just to share your love with them. And so I didn't know what my mom liked to eat because um, I, I was 18 months old when she died. So my aunt, um, I called my aunt from Mexico or yeah, I'm sure I called her and I said, I need, I'm making this altar. Do you know what Connie liked to eat? That's her. My mom's name is Connie Jo. And she's like, oh, I don't remember. She liked sweets. I think this is what she said. And she liked McDonald's. And I was like, McDonald's? I'm not going to go find McDonald's in the middle of Pascuaro. And I wouldn't put that on the altar anyway. Well, maybe I would because it's for the dead person, not for me, <laughs> for the spirit, I should say. But anyway, um, I remember putting canalitas, these cookies that I loved, cinnamon cookies. So because I still don't really know what she loves to eat, I put my favorite things. So so there's uh, pixie sticks and Smarties are my like some of my favorite candies. Those little those little um, I don't know what I was gonna say sour kind of candies. And I'll just show you some of the things on the altar. There's tea. This is for everyone on the altar. Whoever wants it, and chocolates, 
there's chocolate money, there is an apple. I wanted to put watermelon on there, but it was getting too much stuff because I love watermelon. I figured my mom probably loves watermelon, loved watermelon. There's red wine back there, dark chocolate. But anyway, I didn't get the food thing down this year. I would have put avocado and cheese and mango on there too because I think all of them probably might have liked that. But they get the idea and it's attractive. So I'm sure they know my love and appreciation and they will, um, you know, visit if they want. <gasps> Joanne, you're here. Look at my altar, Joanne. Joanne's been making one too. So I'm so excited to share it. So anyway, this is the area of people that just passed. Right here is my maternal grandmother, Irma. I called her grandma. And that's Connie's mom. That's my birth mother right there, Connie Jo. And this is a little, see the ballerina? I'm pointing to it. That's a picture of her when she was little. My grandma had that on her uh, bureau. I always remember that looking at it when I was in her room. So when I, when she, my grandma passed, I got that. Um, down here in this round picture is my gram. This is actually her bedroom and that's her stuff up on the wall, by the way. Um, so it's like so perfect because I'm living in her bedroom now and she was the sweetest woman, um, preschool teacher, uh, faith based, so strong in her faith and just a lovely mom and just a wonderful human being. I'm so grateful um, that she's in my life uh, as a soul on the other side. Thanks, Graham. And I didn't tell you about my Graham. I'll tell you about my grandma and my granny in a bit. This is Mimi there. That's my, um, my mom, the mom that married my dad, who is my earth mom, I call her, because I had my birth mom was Connie Jo. My earth mom's still alive and is a wonderful human being who was the perfect mom for me. That's her mother-in-law, Mimi. And she passed away last December. And um, so that's a sad loss because she just had a heart of gold and was so kind and loving, caring. And back there, you see in the blue, my granny loved that blue suit. And so that's my granny. That's my dad's mom, um, Blanche Wheeler. And she passed away, gosh, I don't know. I, I want to say 10 years ago. I remember I was coming back from, gosh, from... Mexico. I'm not sure. And then there is Alicia. See Alicia? She's my Mexican mama from Yalapa. So, oh, and I put a little gnome there too. I figure he liked to hang out with the, my, my friends on the other side. So I think that's everyone on the altar right now. I'll talk about my two grandmas um, for a minute um, because I don't talk to them often enough. And they're such a, there's more family pictures up there. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? Um, you know, what I want to share is that we can talk to people on the other side. Like, it's so great. You can com communicate with them and and be there, hear their voice come back. And one of the ways I learned this, I'll tell you about my grandma stories in a minute, was when I was in um, Puerto Vallarta living. It was the Day of the Dead. I was in, I stayed in Puerto Vallarta and I was... I had this, I think I was in a writing, I was in a writing group. It was a women's writing group, um, a wonderful small group of, uh, there were four of us and we would write. And so this topic, it was, I think it was October 30th or 31st. And I wrote this letter to my mom and it was like, I wish you could see me now. And I wrote all these things. I wish you could be here to hold my hand. I wish you could guide me through these situations. I wish you, you know, knew what I was up to. And as I finished writing it, I felt this impulse really clear to write back. And I knew it was really the heart of my mother that was writing. And it was such a beautiful, profound experience of her acknowledging me and saying that she's always been watching me. and She sees me and I feel so blessed because I feel like I have so many mother figures in my life. I have a very strong mother um, who raised me and um, is just an extraordinary human being and I'm going to see her on Saturday. So that's awesome. And, and then I have all these other maternal, gorgeous maternal figures that have influenced me in some way and really expanded my heart and showed me what love looks like and what it acts like, and what it feels like. Um, so that brings me to my, I'll talk about my granny first. My granny was a seamstress and a she was just a badass woman let me just tell you she did so much in in raising her family the total matriarch like held it all together for everyone and she had four kids 11 grandkids like 17 or 18 great grandkids 
she was from a family of I think 16 or 14 siblings and then her husband had like 16 siblings you know just like family 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 and she was super smart and a seamstress and a cook and a um, house cleaner I used to go clean houses with her I'm sure I wasn't very much help but I used to love to be around her she showed me how to sew, although I never really picked up that habit. She just showed me how to make some doll clothes. Um, and she was a fantastic cook. And I mean, just lo everyone loved Granny's cooking. And we would always have all of our family gatherings at her house. And I really miss that because it really brought us all together. But we do get to have it at our cousin Jill. She's recreating the tradition. But I mean, I just remember being a little kid running around and just playing with all my cousins and then going in the house and granny would be making something delicious. And she was just an awesome human being. So I'm so grateful that I'm from her line of the fat, you know, of, of ancestry because she's really awesome. And then I want to share about my grandma Irma, which is here. I really wish I had a better picture of her cause it's super blurry, but can you see her? This one right here, that's my grandma Irma. She is my birth mother's mom and I had a super special relationship with her um, growing up. Um, Connie Jo was her first born, her daughter, firstborn daughter. And um, she died when she was 24 of leukemia. So I can't even imagine a mother's pain to lose their daughter like that young. I just can't even imagine. And then back then it was in 1969, I think, 68. You didn't talk about it. You know, you did the funeral and you, whatever the ceremony was around that, and then you moved on. And I feel like that must have been just crushing to not be able to really fully process it and not have a ceremony like a Day of the Dead every year that you got to honor it. I mean, maybe she had her own way of doing it. I'm sure knowing her, she did a little small way of honoring on birthdays or something that she did to have the memory. But um, I always felt a very special relationship with gran my grandma Irma because I think I was a representation of Connie for her. Um, Connie and my dad had two children, me and my brother, Tim, who's also known as Bliss. You might see him here on Facebook. Um, and, and then, um, so Bliss was four and a half when she died. I was one and a half. And uh, what was I going to say about my grandma Irma? I just feel like my grandma Irma infused love and adoration in everything she did, especially with me and my brother. I feel she was so grateful every time she saw us. She was so would make us our favorite foods and take us to special places and really ask us how our life was. And, and there was something that just occurred to me that I did that was really bad that, you know, was really hurtful. Like I stole from her, some of her diamonds. I took them all out of her, her jewels. I'm laughing about it now, but it was really traumatic. Like, you know, those little, Oh my God, I just saw this. This is actually from my grandma's house. I, not something I stole. I got it from her legitimately when, when she passed, I think I took it, but, but stuff like that, you know, remember that jewelry back in the day? I remember a time when I actually opened all of her jewels. Cause I, I was probably like eight or nine. I hate to say older, maybe even 10, but I took all the diamonds out and I put them all in my suitcase because I wanted them all. I had a problem with stealing growing up. Ask my mom. Um, I'm he healed of that by the way. Uh, but anyway, I, I don't know why I'm telling you this story so random. I guess grandma wants me to tell you, but I stole, I mean, and I, and my grandma had candy hidden all over the house, chocolate chips, everything. So my whole suitcase was full of stuff that I took from grandma's. I packed up my bag and my grandma wanted to help me pack. And I said, no, no, it's okay. You don't need to help. You don't need to help. And she kept insisting and she opened my bag and she found it all. And I was just so crushed, you know, when you disappoint someone like that you love so much was crushed that I did that and that she caught me. And my grandma said, we can't tell anyone about this. <laughs> That's a grandma, you know, like she just didn't want anyone to know. And I, and she was so heartbroken. I remember her look just like, why would you do this, Terry Joe? That's what she said. And I said, I don't know. I just wanted them because they were pretty. <laughs> Obviously, you know, I like pretty sparkly stuff. <laughs> anyway, that was so weird that I just shared that story. But clearly it was a story that was meant to be shared with you. 
Grandmas are so special. Moms are so special. Dads are so special. Brothers and sisters are so special. Cousins, uncles, aunts, cats, dogs. All of us are so special. And we're not limited to this life. This is just one little blip in the soul's journey. We're lucky we get to know each other here. We're lucky we get to say, hey, you again. I remember you. I'll see you in the next life. I totally feel that. This is just one part of our soul's education here on Earth School. So if you lost a loved one, or if you're on close to death, don't be scared. It's good. I'm like excited to die. I'm not saying I want to die. I'm just saying like, I'm not scared of it at all. I don't want it to be painful. Of course, who wants it to be painful? And I'd love it to be quick and just boom, gone. Bye. I'll visit you in the other realms. Um, but I just don't think death is scary. And I feel that's one of the main things that Dia de los Muertos helped me with is I feel like I want to go to the other side because I want to give you another view of my altar. Um, oh, sorry, that's the house phone. Hold on a second. That's kind of annoying. I don't know what to do when that happens. Um, I don't know how to pause it. Let's see if I can. I guess I'll probably end it because if it comes on voicemail, I don't want you to hear the voicemail. Anyway, I love you all. And I love um, this life. And... Oh, it's so distracting. I want to get up and answer it, but I can't. Maybe we should just wait through it. Maybe it's one of our loved ones. Maybe it's one of our loved ones calling. Let's just hear. It's probably a sales call, or they'll hang up if we're lucky. Yay, they hung up. It was spirit saying that it loves us no matter what. So I think that's what I want to just end this this call on um is just saying how precious life is and how precious death is oh and one other thing if you have not seen the movies coco and the book of life please see them buy them own them coco is very popular they're both animated films about um oh no the picture is breaking up sorry i hope it will keep going because i'm not done um anyway the the movie Coco is a popular one. Uh, both of them are animated family films. And um, it, Coco came out a couple, maybe three, four years ago. Um, just a fantastic film about Dia de los Muertos and remembering people that we love. And, and, but what people don't know, a lot of people don't know, is The Book of Life came out before that, probably five or six years before that. I don't know the exact dates. Don't quote me on that. Um, it's another animated film also about the day of death. Um, the dead and I think it's also about the Akashic records and the fact that life goes on and on and on we don't end here and I just found it so both of those films are so deeply moving they're beautifully done so sorry about this um, messages coming out I also don't know how to turn that off <laughs> clearly I'm not very good with technology um, so anyway that's all I want to say to you I love you create an altar it could be it doesn't have to be this elaborate um, the other story I forgot to tell you is I spent $120 at Michael's getting all of these things for my altar and I ended up taking back like $100 of it because that was my inner child like over being overexcited and we weren't sure what we wanted to do and really the only thing we needed were these fake flowers and some of them are real, the butterflies and the, and the candles and then I got real flowers. That's all you really need and then pictures. And you could do an altar just to one being. It doesn't have to be to 42 people that you know that passed. It could be to someone very special or someone that recently passed. And um, maybe you'll have dreams about them. Maybe they'll give you messages of support and love. Yes, isn't it the best movie, Janet? Like, I just love it. And watch The Book of Life with Alex. You will love it, The Book of Life. So look it up, find it. It's not as much talked about. I think it's equally, if not better than Coco. I have a really hard time deciding between the two, which ones I love best. I love you all and blessings for a sacred life and a sacred death. Bye.